Hello fellow YouTubers and how's YouTube going today? I must be pretty good. I heard they got a few videos. Um, today I'm going to show you my super secret awesome uh, Epic Swag Dope uh, Bowler method on designing a character that I learned from super cool art school that I went to. First we're going to start off with reference. Can't make a character if you don't know anything about anything. So research what your character like research what your character's like. So like in this instance we got like cowboys. So like research cowboys. Research the demographic of person that you're gonna like create. Find out how to anchor them into the real world because that's gonna make them more believable, more authentic, make you look way fluffing smarter. Yeah, so what we got here, we got an old guy, old cowboy dude. So research old cowboys. What did cowboys wear? So when you're doing your research, just like, you know, look at what they're wearing, why they're wearing it, why they had, why they looked like that, basically. Just keep asking yourself, why, 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 and keep researching that. And then take those pieces and you can just get your favorite parts, mash them together, make a dope character. Now we know what our character is, we want to know the type of is they are. So figure out the personality of a character, what you want them to be how old they are, like what they think about the world, and then you want to show that through the way they look. So this character I'm doing is an old, grizzled, veteran, outlaw cowboy. So I want him to look really haggard and tired and like he's been through some shit and like he's pretty jaded and pretty grizzled. Also with like a hint of class because you know, he's, he's not just some brute. He's also like a, he's very knowledgeable, worldly dude. So, I get that through with, you know, his costume. He's wearing, like, relatively nice clothes. He's got a, you know, he's got a vest. He's got his hair parted. But also, you know, I've added these weathered elements to him. So, just think about that with your character. What can I add to them that shows um, something about their life and their personality? That's in, like, poses, the way their expressions are, the way they carry themselves, what they wear, what they carry, what they use. Next step is silhouette. Yeah, look at Mickey the freaking mouse, dude. Um, you can tell him just by his silhouette. So when I'm designing a character, I usually start with a silhouette um, in my sketches just so I can like get a really recognizable silhouette because the more recognizable the silhouette, the more unique your character is, the more identifiable they are. Um, and that just that adds for visual interest as well. Um, and like clarity in poses as well, which is really good for animation. I'll talk about that in some track down the line. Next step, shape language. Um, a circle, friendly, hee hee hee. Triangle, pointy, angry, dangerous. Uh, square, rigid, strong. Oval, not too sure. Still working on that one. But this character is very rigid, very like sturdy. So we're gonna go with like boxy sort of shapes. Uh, not really not really any flares or curves because you know he's not an elegant character he's very straightforward shit like that but you know if you want a friendly character go for like more rounded shapes make their eyes big make you know make them look the, the I, th I think I heard the more you look I think I heard the closer you make something look like a baby the cuter it is so you know big head big eyes big tooth big curly hair looks great um, next step is asymmetry. Um, if you have a character that looks just the exact same on either side, it's a little boring. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm sorry. So, my character here started off a little boring. And then I added, um, the peg leg and the scar, and I flipped on which side they are. Um, so we got the scar on, like, one side peg leg on the other so your eye sort of gets drawn to different parts there's no side where there's sort of nothing happening and that's that's just a rule of thumb as well don't be like oh I've got to make my character asymmetrical completely just like if you see a little boring part like try and add something sort of cool to it unless you're going for like a very analytical or like pristine character then symmetry actually does help with that because um, you want to show them that they're like very mathematical and precise. Next step is palette and tone. I start off with the tone usually just because I like, I suck at coloring usually. Um, 
so I can first separate my light, medium, and dark tones. Think of a cube, you know, like the bop, bop, bop. Try and think of big, medium, and small, which is a really good design tactic. Um, start with a tone or a color that you want most of it to be, and then add your secondary color and tone that you want a little bit of it to be, and then add your third uh, color and tone that you want just a tiny little bit to be, like your little flares and your little rim lights and shit like that. And that's how you usually get very pleasing design because every, everything's like the exact same size. Because if everything's like the exact same size, kind of boring, uh, kind of lame. Next step is poses. Usually in the animation pipeline, you want to show someone or anyone that's going to be working on the team and animating it. This character's like main poses are going to look like, show them what they look like when they're doing something. So you can get a view for like how this character carries themselves. Uh, like with this old man, I'm like, yeah, he's like angry. He like orders people around. He knows what to do, but he's also very hunched over a lot of the time. So, you know, just show the emotions of your character, the poses they would usually do. Just so anyone who looks at your character or has to animate your character or likes your character just knows knows what they're fucking with, you know? Next step is expressions. Um, expression sheets are really good for animation pipelines because, you know, if anyone's looking at your character and being like, oh, he's going to be sad in this scene, you can just look straight at that and know what a normal sad emotion looks like. And they can change that more if they want, but they got a baseline to go off. It's just like... This is basically just instructions, but like these are really, really good if you're working with other people or even yourself because you could just forget, you know, you it just keeps things consistent. Last step is turnaround because you're the one who's created the character. You only know what they look like in your head. No one else can like get in your ear and like look at what they look like. So you got to draw a turnaround sheet um, to show anyone wanting to draw your character, you know, what they look like from the profile three-quarter view behind and front and that's usually the minimum you know and if they're like asymmetrical like this guy uh you'll have to do it for both ways like left and right which is a pain in the ass but you know wah wah yeah so it, you just want to show the proportions of everything and see i've drawn like these red lines which are just very good guidelines for showing those proportions um you know exactly where everything lines up and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you create a cool fucking character. Um, I could go in more in depth, but it would get really boring. Um, but, you know, if anyone's got questions, just ask. I'll answer. Um, yeah. I don't know how to end the yapping session, but um, I got like an impression of like a little kitty cat. 